Hello, this is Steve and welcome back to our sustainable journey. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about feedstocks. Um, a lot of people think that they want to go big, start a commercial, a commercial worm farm, but they don't have any plans for feedstocks. Um, so we started with the feedstocks first as more of a priority. Um, to make sure that we had enough food coming in for the worms. So you've heard about the, the food scrap pickup. That's kind of our, our one of our main sources. Um, another one is two worms. What great friends. So we have a brewery that gives us their spent grains. So what this is, is they brew beer. And when you brew beer, it's kind of like tea. You use these grains and they normally they look like that right but after a little while um they're not so good so they have a pig farmer that gets the fresh stuff and we take the stuff that is not so fresh um because i really like some of the stuff that grows in there sometimes we get black soldier flies sometimes we get those maggots not necessarily ideal but this is i don't know 500 to a thousand pounds and there's one, two, and then I just, oh, it's, in, it's in the back of the Jeep. We picked up a third one today, so that's probably 1,500 pounds of, of feed for the worms. So that's one source. Um, another feed source that we use to balance things out is cardboard. And we have a whole shed full of cardboard in various stages of shredding. Um, we put it into these super sacks which look like that. There are these giant bags. So after we've shredded it, we, we put it in those. And then the other is the hemp, which I've shown you guys before. So there's the hemp. Um, this right here is probably 500 pounds. I have another 1,600 pounds. We measured it in the trailer. <laughs> So we have 1,600 pounds in the trailer. So, um, yeah, see there in the Jeep, there's another one of those yellow totes. So another one of our feedstocks is coffee, coffee grounds that we get from Starbucks. Um, we were getting five to 10 pounds a day pre-pandemic. Um, it's considerably less than that now. Um, but that's another feedstock. They give it away for free. So any coffee shop, Dunkin', your local coffee shop, um, Starbucks, they they will set it aside for you. You just have to ask because they make a lot of it. And we process it because a lot of them use these machines that press it into these pucks. Um, and I don't like putting those pucks into the worm bin. So I like to put it onto our sifter. Actually, I modified it. I added, added a... Um, an additional screen for coffee grounds to break them down a little bit finer not as fine as the castings themselves um, but finer than those giant pucks so we like to break them down a little bit um, but and then and then um, because this was a former alpaca petting zoo these are the piles of poop um that they had composted a lot of this has been broken down this stuff is, is awesome we use it actually for the garden um we don't usually send it through the worm bins but there's a lot of it because when you live on a farm there's a lot of poop everything poops um and you have to do something with it so that's one thing um <clears throat> another thing to consider is that not all feedstocks are equal so food scraps are great Cardboard, coffee grounds are great. Manures are fine. Um, as long as they've already gone through the hot process. So the grains that we've gotten from the brewery, we don't like to give them directly to the worms because they have a tendency to be a little acidic and kind of scare away the worms. The worms flee from them. And so what we do is this is just a tiny one that we set up. A while ago because it's rotting apart. I need to redo it. That's actually one of my projects this weekend is to make a much, much, much larger compost area 
because we have a lot of stuff to compost now. Um, but you have to compost this stuff, let it go through the hot process, cool down, and then it's fine to feed to the worms because it, it that acidity goes away. So what we do is we take the grains, we add some of the shredded cardboard, and we just layer it. Grains, cardboard, grains, cardboard. Those are your browns and your greens. Browns, cardboard, greens, um, the grains. And that will heat up and then cool down and be ready um, for the worms because we like to send everything through through the worms um, just because it provides a better casting material and we like it for the garden that way. So those are the main feedstocks that we use. Um, and like I said, we're sitting on, what did I say, about three or 4,000 pounds right now that I'll take care of this weekend um, with the worms and then we'll start all over next week because they're going to go through it and we're going to need to feed them some more. So make sure that if you start a commercial worm farm you have plenty of inputs. You need to make sure you have your inputs. That's like my, my big complaint to people that start new is they're like, oh my family eats plenty of food scraps. That'll be enough, and it's not. You need thousands of pounds of food um, to do this. It takes a lot more than just your own personal consumption stuff um, because you want to make sure that the worms never go hungry. So we'll check on some of the bins that we fed last week with those little different, um, those different feeding methods. We'll see how they did. Um, and we'll go from there. Maybe we'll check on the chickens, see how they're doing. All right. All right, let's check on the CFT. They seem to be doing well. And we added the guys from the, the straw bin back into the regular bin. I got some mushrooms growing. That's fantastic. Worms are doing well. Everybody seems to be happy. Nobody's escaping. It's a very full bin of worms. Check out this other one that we do fun things with. More, more happy worms. Oh, we got some plants growing. I wonder what that's going to be. Maybe we'll put it in our garden. I sometimes do that with the transplants. We get a lot of things that grow because the castings are such a great source. Um, here's another one growing. Um, again, Full bin of worms. These guys are doing awesome. Cool. We'll check on the uh, the ones that we experimented with last week. Now, so you can actually see <clears throat> in this bin. This is one that we gave them food scraps last week, and there's not much left except for this stuff. Um, I think the rest of everything else. Oh, worm ball. There they are. So clearly, I don't see any other food in here. Um, they need to be fed again. So, bury your food. They seem to do pretty well. <laughs> so, and they were all inside of this. Oops, I'll just let you guys get back to it. Uh, yeah, bananas take forever, but see there. They're chowing down, they're getting there. <clears throat> and you'll actually notice, if you look closely, this bin is really dry. I don't like that, that makes me nervous. Um, so I'm gonna spritz these with some water. I'll show you what I use in just a minute. And here's another one. Let's see how this guy looks. And here they all are. Nope, oh, they were all inside of that. My bad, guys. Sorry. See, and that is a lime. And they were chowing. So we're going to bury them. Back up. You can see there, that's where the food scraps are. See? They're chowing down. See? Those are the, those onion peels that I talked about. <clears throat> those are going to be gone soon enough. Alright. Look at this one. I think these bins look dry. All right, so here's the scraps. Here's a paper towel that they're chowing on. 
avocado shell. Jeez, they're going crazy for this stuff. And then you can see, so we have, oh, there's still some over on this side too. A little worm ball. Oh, because there's food over here. That's a banana peel that they're chowing on. All right, cool. So they're doing well. All right. So we've checked on them. They seem happy. Oh, this is the third one. I think this is the third one that we did. I think so. Oh, there they are. They're eating banana. Let's see, chowing down. And you see, that's there's the bottom of the tray, right? And we do that on purpose. Because what that does. Oh, they were eating that tomato. So what that does is that encourages breeding because they're close together. And when you're close together, you're more likely to breed. It's just kind of the natural order for things for worms. I wanted to show you the bottles that I use real quick for spritzing. So it's just these simple, I don't know where we found them, probably Amazon because you can find everything on Amazon. Um, fill it with water, spritz your bins, make sure if, if, they're, if the moisture is low. Um, like mine were, so I'll, I'll spritz them, um, maybe once a day, every couple of days, just to make sure that they're good. And then just keep an eye on it. Make sure that they stay moist because the worms need the moisture, right? We've talked about that. mass moving thought there was something under the banana and I was right it was a giant worm ball <laughs> Jeez. oh man these guys all right good times